my bumper stickers today, very simple. You're going to have to be more transparent, whether you want to or not. We've just seen some great examples of how people are mining data about what's going on out there, what's happening to your company, what's happening in government, and how they're telling stories about what you're doing, whether you're willing to be part of those stories or not. The second point is that companies need a transparency strategy. They have cybersecurity strategies, they have privacy policies. They need to start thinking in a very strategic way about what they're doing with transparency and open data. And then last, it isn't just about tools and technology. It's about culture and it's about leadership. For the last three and a half years, I've been teaching at Georgetown University in a unique multidisciplinary program on communication, culture, and technology. Technology is the last of three, but that's because it's alphabetical. We all know that technology tends to lead culture and that communication can be a huge barrier in the adoption of technology. So I, when I joined the Leading Edge Forum a few months back, I started a project on transparency. It's entitled Creating Your Transparency Policy in the Age of WikiLeaks. And I'm going to share with you a couple findings from that project and uh, talk a little bit about how open data fits into this. This is just to say what everyone has already said. The amount of data is exploding. The typical company has 100 times more data than they had 20 years ago. And there's increasing pressure to share it. They're working with more people in different companies. They're outsourcing more activities. Regulators and reporters are demanding more information. Certainly investors want to know more about what's going on. The result of that is that it's almost impossible to make sure that no data leaks out the door. And WikiLeaks is a great example of what can happen, not just to the federal government, but to Swiss banks and to other, other major institutions. It's very hard to make sure that every bit of data stays in-house. So what do you do? Well, The Economist did a great article about six months ago showing how companies are starting to realize that if they strategically leak information, if they open up previously confidential information, they can control the story. They can make themselves look good or at least not look bad. This is essential, not just to help their employees get the information they want, but to shape the environment in which they're competing. By being more open externally, companies can move from a lockdown mentality where information was only shared through NDAs and careful licensing agreements to a world where they're, they're seen as collaborating with the world. They become the center of an ecosystem of collaborators, innovators. They bring in the academic community to work on new projects. Uh, in my report, I walked through a whole list of examples from the Netflix prize to some of the other projects that have been mentioned here where companies have opened up the doors, let the data flow out, and the result has been publicity, new ideas, new partners, new investment. But the great thing about being open externally is it drives internal transparency as well. If employees know that sharing information with somebody in the next division won't result in them getting fired when it's leaked out the door because that information isn't that sensitive, if they understand what's okay to share and what's not, if there's a clear, coherent transparency strategy throughout the company, then that can foster internal communications. And this isn't just for companies, it's for government agencies, the intelligence community, it's even for academia, which isn't a particularly good example of transparency in some cases. So in the report I talked through nine different topics, uh, starting with the, the traditional area of transparency, which doesn't involve big data, that is the CEO and the top executives talking to the world, and then going through all the other topics where companies are doing things very exciting things to share personnel data, to share research findings, to share customer data, sales data. And, and as I say, we, you can go through this and, uh, in detail. Uh, I did yesterday, and some of you were here for that. I won't do it today. But the point here is that by being more open, you can build trust. And that, I think, is what we haven't talked enough about. By being more open, we can resolve what is a fundamental conflict between the consumer and the vendor. Consumers don't want to share data. Vendors want all the data they can get. Corey talked about the links that Facebook and other companies will go to to get data from reluctant customers. I think the answer is pretty simple. If vendors want the information, 
that customers are reluctant to give, they're going to have to give information in return. We have to make this a two-dimensional problem. So we have to add a second variable, and that is transparency about the system. What are companies doing with the data that they collect? I call this mutually assured disclosure. Companies share the details of the data they collect and what they're doing with it, and they show the customer, in a very individualized way, what benefits they get from sharing that data. I think this is much better than the regulatory approach, which is to say you can't collect this data or you can collect this data but you can't hold it for very long. That's going to get in the way of some of the most exciting big data projects we've heard about today. Instead, companies have to be more open about what they do. When you start talking about openness and sharing, you're not going to always just dump stuff on the web. This is a worksheet we've developed to think about the different communities you might share with and what you might want to get in return. Some cases you'll share it with the world. Other cases you want to know a lot about the person you're sharing with. You might even sign an NDA with them. Google is a great example of a company that has made transparency a priority. They have made several very bold statements about how transparency is a high priority. The interesting thing at Google is that's about half true. They're very transparent when it comes to what governments are doing to them in terms of censorship or requiring uh, disclosure of person personal records of Google customers. They're not very transparent about what they're doing in the research labs, what their personnel are working on. It's very hard to find where people work or even if they work at Google. So it's a, a good example of where this company is going down that Chinese menu of nine different topics and picking and choosing. And every company that generates lots of data is going to do that. There's going to be certain data they share, certain data they will never share. Nobody's going to be completely transparent. As in my project, we looked at what determines how transparent a company will be. And the, over, the, the most important, overarching issue is whether the CI, CEO and the board are on top of this, whether they think that transparency is an issue, whether they understand how open data can generate new revenue, new opportunities, more publicity, and help with recruiting. If that happens, if that door is open to the C-suite and they understand what you're all talking about, this is 10 times easier. A lot of other factors go into this. Um, obviously, if you're in an area that, where things are moving fast, there's a lot more interest in what you're doing. There's a lot more demand for transparency. Again, I won't go through all the factors. So just to summarize, my final bumper sticker, you have a security strategy, you have a privacy and compliance policy, you need a transparency strategy. You need a coherent way of talking about what you're doing in the larger context of transparency. If you can frame it that way, it becomes something that isn't just of interest to the data geeks or the marketing people or the research community. It's something that's fundamental to your company. And that, I think, is my bottom line message. The government's done pretty well here, both the UK government and the US government. Uh, when I was in the Clinton White House, our policy was put it on the web unless there's a good reason not to. And Obama's gone one step further and tried to put it out there in an open format. If you have that kind of top-level leadership, it gives permission to people to share. And that's, I think, again, my bottom line. I hope this is helpful, and I'm happy to talk to anybody about uh, the report I'm working on, which will be out in a couple of weeks. I'm here today and, to, and to most of tomorrow morning. Thank you very much.